Hey, what's up everyone? At Laracon US, a new first party package was announced called Laravel Prompts, and it allows us to take our artisan commands to the next level. So let's take a look. So you can find the Laravel Prompts repo on github.com slash laravel slash prompts. I've already gone ahead and installed it using Composer. Um, it's the basic Composer require Laravel slash prompts command, and I've installed it in a LiveWire project of mine, where I want to see if we can take a look at upgrading the PHP artisan LiveWire commands and use prompts instead. In case you're unfamiliar with LiveWire, there's a make command that allows you to make a new LiveWire command using the command line interface. So in this case, you can see that our LiveWire make command requires a name, and it has a couple of options like force, inline, test, etc. Now, if we would run PHP Artisan LiveWire make without giving a name, you can see that we currently get an error saying like, hey, the argument name is missing. So let's take a look and see how we can make this an interactive command that automatically prompts for given values when they are missing. Now this is really cool because it's very easy to add this functionality. We simply have to ensure that our command implements the prompts for missing input interface. This will automatically ask for uh, certain arguments that are missing. So in this case, when we run the command again, you can see that it is now automatically asking like, hey, what's the name of your component? We get a nice input box. We get validation out of the box as well. If we leave the field empty, um, we can cancel out of the command. So this is really, really neat. Now besides name, we got a couple of other options as well. For example, force, inline, test, etc. So let's give it a try and implement the inline option. So in order to figure this out, I like to take a look at some of the native commands that Laravel has. So for example, we can take a look at the make model command that ships with Laravel by default. And if you scroll down, you can see that there's a method which is called after prompting for missing arguments. And this provides us with an input and an output interface. And here we can add additional questions that we would like to prompt when we did not receive any options. So let's copy and paste this method into our live our make command. Okay, next we can remove the is reserved name method given that's not available in this command, but we can use the this did receive options method. So in this case, we'll simply return when options are provided, if not, we can prompt for additional options. In this case, we're gonna ask whether they want to use an inline component or not. So for this specific example, we can use the confirm function. And we're simply gonna ask like, hey, would you like to make an inline component? And by default, it will have the options yes or no, and the default will be set to true. Now we can use the input variable to hook into our input interface and set the options on our command. So in this case, we can simply call input set option and set the inline option to true. So now if we switch to the terminal and run a command again, you can see that we are prompted for our component name and we get a nice confirm option whether we want to inline our component. So let's take a look. If we switch back to our editor and open up our component class, we should see that the HTML is now inline and it is. So this is all working, perfect. Now we'll probably want to set the default to false whenever we ask whether we want to make a inline component. So let's use named arguments and clean up our confirm function a little bit. So first we'll make sure that we set the label and now we can also set the default to false. Now we can do the exact same thing, but in this case for our test. So we can simply copy and paste the confirm question that we have for our inline component and rename it and ask a different question where we'll ask like, hey, do you want to create a test for this component? Let's change the set option to test and set the value to true. And let's give the command another try in our terminal and see whether we are prompted with our questions. So let's create a new component called input. And there we get a question. Do we want to make this inline? Yes or no? It's set to no by default. Do we want to create a test? Yes, we do. And now you can see that our class for a component has been generated, our view is generated, and our test, which corresponds with the answers that we provided in the prompt. Okay, let's move on to the next command, which is the publish command. PHP Artisan LiveWire Publish is a command that allows you to publish your assets, your config, or pagination. So let's see how we can update this command 
to make use of the new prompt options. So I think the multi-select would probably be a good option for this command. So like we did before, we can provide it a label where we can simply ask like, what do you would like to publish? Next, we can set the options and we can provide a key value pair. So we're gonna say assets, config, and pagination. Finally, let's assign the output to a variable and see the results we get by die and dumping our options variable. So let's give our command a try without any arguments or options. And there you go, we are now prompted. What would you like to publish? And we get these neat little checkboxes and we can select a couple of options and deselect them if we want. And when we press enter, you can see that the keys from our key value array are the final result. Now, if we scroll down in our command, you can see that we call the vendor publish command for each and every different option. So we got one from assets, we got one for our config and our pagination. So let's remove all the existing code and we'll simply use a for each loop to loop through each of the keys that we get returned from our array and call the associated publish commands. Let's also make this a required option by using the named argument called required and simply setting this value to true. Okay, let's put it to the test. When I run the command, you can see that I'm now prompted to select what I would like to publish. If I don't enter anything and press enter, I get a required validation message. Once I select an option, the validation message gets hidden and I can continue and select one or more of these options. And you can see that it runs the associated publish commands. So this is pretty nice. We removed a bunch of code made our command simpler and it looks even better. We have all the same functionality and it simply works perfect out of the box. Let's move on to a different command. Livewire also ships with a move command that allows you to move a component and rename it or move it into a new directory. By default, it accepts a name and a new name and there are a few options like force and inline. Let's start off by doing the same that we did earlier and implementing the correct interface that will automatically prompt for any missing input. So now if we switch back to the terminal and run the PHP artisan livewire move command. You can see that we are now prompted for the component name and the new name. Now, instead of entering the name manually, it would be pretty cool if we can provide a list of the existing components that we would like to select and rename. So right now, Whenever we run the command, the name is automatically prompted for. In this case, we don't want a text field, but we want to have a select field. So we want to override the default functionality. We can use the prompt for missing arguments using method and override the default functionality. So we can return an array and we need to make sure that the key matches up with the uh, name that we have in our signature above. So in this case, name, and we can give it a closure. And inside the closure, we can override the default functionality. So we can say, hey, we in this case, we want to return a search field so we can search for a specific component. Let's provide our search function with a label asking which component would you like to move? And let's provide a set of options as well. This accepts a closure. The closure will provide us with the value that is being prompted. So whenever a user starts typing, so we want to ensure that we only return options whenever a value is uh, being provided. So if the um, amount of characters returned is zero, we simply return nothing. If this is not the case, we'll make sure that we filter down on our components and include only the components that match the value that is typed into the input box. So I'm gonna call this get components, uh, which is a method that I already created that will turn a list of component names. And we're gonna filter down on these names and make sure that we only return components that contain the value which is being typed into the input box. And finally, I made a little mistake here. We need to make sure that we return an empty array whenever we don't have a value to work with. Okay, let's run the command again. Now we are prompted which component you want to move. And as soon as we start typing, you can see that we get a dropdown automatically with the names of our component. So in just a few minutes, we significantly improved the developer experience uh, when working with our command line interface. Now be sure to head over to the documentation because there are more available prompts. You get a password prompt, there is a 
um, a single select there is a suggest prompt as well um, there are a few terminal considerations you have to take into account and in case your terminal or your environment does not support Laravel prompts it will automatically fall back to the uh, Symfony CLI